Ladies and gents, Pepper Bella here, and I'm bringing you guys some exciting news for Intercellar Marines, which you probably already know since you read it in the damn video title. But yes, nonetheless, it is the move to Unity 5. They finally upgraded the game. It is about time, because it's been ages. Unity 5 has been out for a long time now, I think. I, I don't recall when it was released, but it's it's been it's been quite a while, and we've been expecting this about a month ago. But they finally got it done, and here it is. And what does that mean for Intercellar Marines, and is it any different? Um, right now, no. It is completely the same. There is literally no difference for content or gameplay or anything. The difference that there is is probably one of the most significant things that can happen for a game on PC. That is performance increases. There is a significant performance increase. It is mind-bogglingly awesome how many frames I have gained playing this game. Usually, I would play with roughly 120 to 140 frames at a resolution of 1280 by 720 given my HDMI connection to my 32-inch HD TV. Now, I do play in 1080p in certain games where it is beneficial. And usually I would like to play games in 1080, like most games I will play in 1080p. Now, for Interstellar Marines, I would typically play in 720p just because the frame rates wouldn't be, like, amazing. Because, like I said, it would be roughly 60 to 90, and sometimes it would dip into the 40s, depending on the map. Like Dynacore, for example, that was demanding when it first came out. Still is somewhat more demanding out of all the maps available, so frame rate would naturally dip a bit. Now, all the gameplay you're seeing now is in 1080p at 60 frames per second, if you have the YouTube thing set up for 60. Point is, it's running phenomenally. It's like 100 frames on average. 60 to 100 to 120 to even 130 on some areas I've noticed point is it rarely rarely dips below 60 which is great because it used to in 1080p all the time 720 would always stay above 60 so pretty much I'm getting the same performance I'm getting now in 1080 that it was in 720 so that's amazing like that's a huge bump up in performance given like how amazing this game looks in 1080 like it sometimes it would sacrifice those frames just because the sharpness of the image is so much better in 1080p compared to 720 and like seeing trees and the foliage it's just like, everything looks way nicer in 1080 so i can imagine playing in like a higher resolution it'd be even better like 2k if you forced it which i've tried to do and well given my hd tv it's pointless because you can't see anything even though you're upscaling so it's not really true 2k if that makes any sense you're upscaling the resolution through hardware and it's not exactly anyway point is it, i couldn't really tell a difference and not only that Playing the game at like 30 frames a second is just is not ideal on PC. So, yeah. Something else that I guess you can say has changed with Unity 5 would be the lighting. The lighting actually looks a little better in a weird way. Like shadows seem to cast like slightly more accurately and things are a little bit... It just There are always some texture glitches as well because like later on in this video in one of the gameplay clips you'll see a shadow of a soldier... Initial Marine going through the floor, confusing me, and I shot at it thinking it was an actual person, but it was just a shadow, and then he was on the floor above it, in which case I killed him then. But there are some weird texture problems at the moment. You will see in one of these clips at one point that distracted everybody and got us all killed was the cave on this particular map. It was super white, looked nice, but that's not technically how it's supposed to look. The whole cave was super bright white because textures and the lighting isn't entirely working. I mean, it is working, but it's like, you could tell that when there's a texture problem, it's because it's due to the fact that they imported all of the assets from Unity 4 into Unity 5, and naturally, coming along with that, there's gonna be some small, minor annoyances and issues, and that's probably one of them. I'm not sure if it's intended, but it's there, and it's crazy, and it's cool looking. It's not really that crazy. I'm hyping it up and you're gonna see it in the video up shortly and you're gonna be like, well, that's, that's nothing. That's just, it's just white. But it's really bright white. Like it's very distractingly white. I don't know why. See, so yeah, I'm gonna enter the cave. Here I go. And then it's just like, oh my God, everything's just so white. It's like, you can see the color imbalances between the walls and the ceiling and you can see the actual texture lines. It's not, yeah, so. I mean, it looks cool, because, like, I mean, caves that are that bright do exist. Like, where you walk inside, and it's, like, different type of elements that make up the rock, and it's, like, really fascinating to look at. But anyway, 
it got us killed. So there's that. Along with the patch, they added a few fixes. So they improved the nucleus map. It's been fixed and co-op servers are now up and running. So that's that's good. I don't know what was wrong with nucleus. Could be elevator shaft problems, could be performance issues, could be I don't know. I don't really I wasn't following. I don't really know what the issues were. I know the the elevators and stuff could be such a pain in the ass. So hopefully that's what they were referring to. I don't know. Point is, it's fixed. Whatever is fixed, whatever was wrong is fixed now. And now they have servers for it in the co-op section. Now, for anybody who purchased the game and was considered enlisted, they have now been changed and upgraded to being a frontliner because if you're familiar with the purchasing system that Zero Point Software has in place, it was enlisted, which means you pay like $5, and if you pay, like spend a little bit more, I think it was around $10 or something, you would get frontliner, and then if you paid even more, which I think was around $20 to $30, you would get a special like spearhead you'd be a spearhead member and you would get special privileges and access to cool concept art and content and stuff that was shoved into a spearhead folder just for spearhead people so it was like a little badge you had anyway the point is the reason why they're changing that now so that all enlisted individuals are now upgraded to frontliner is because they're lowering the price for early access on steam i believe it was around 15 to 20 dollars originally and now it is 10 dollars american or 11 something canadian I just looked at it and I already forgot it. But yeah, it's $11 something if you're Canadian because our money, it, currency, is, uh, I hate that. Anyway, uh, that's unfortunate, but hey, it's a dollar extra. Like, who cares, right? Point is, it's $10 American. So it's even cheaper now. And if you've been on the fence about getting this game due to the price or whatever, now is your chance because it's a little bit cheaper. Just that little extra bit that means you can still buy yourself a donut and a coffee at your local donut and coffee store. Whether you're American and you got Starbucks or you're Canadian and you have the superior, better than everything in the world, Tim Hortons. So, take that America. Starbucks sucks. Mmm, I'm gonna get ripped on probably, but <laughs> whatever. Come to Canada, try Tim Hortons, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. But, anyway... I don't, I don't know why I'm mentioning Tim Hortons and I'm being so defensive about it. It's almost like they paid me to mention it. That would happen? I don't know. But I don't think they did. I mean, I don't do that kind of stuff. That's just ridiculous. They actually didn't. Anyway, so the other fixes they made to the game. Uh, let's see here. We got Linux players can now join password protected servers before they were unable to for some strange reason. Probably wasn't that strange, but they just weren't able to connect to regular operating system well, windows essentially they were not able to connect to windows servers that had password protection that is now remedied i don't see how that was really an issue mainly because people couldn't host servers anyway and password protected servers were kind of like hosted by zero point software i believe but i'm guessing it was for anybody who wanted to play in competitive games with password protected servers and they were unable to because they had a linux based operating system well it's fixed so, they also addressed some things in Hell Week. The dropped backpacks are now properly destroyed between Hell Week games. Supposedly, they would linger. I don't really know how. I don't know if it's like literally between one match to the next match, a backpack would just be there and you'd be like, Oh my god, someone died here recently. In reality, it was just left over from the last game that was played. Like a, a reminder that death looms over you at all times in the most unexpected places. It's probably what that means. It's like ghost haunting shit like all over the place and same with the crates so the crates will now be properly destroyed between games so i never encountered that problem i mean i don't know if i actually did or not i've seen bodies and backpacks left all over the place i wasn't sure if that was because people actually died or that was literally just left from the last round it's terrifying to encounter because you're just like oh shit there was a huge like throwdown here and sometimes you'll find a bunch of them like i remember i ran at this one area in the industrial place and I crossed over the bridge and I got to the other side and there was five. There was five backpacks like all close to each other. And I was just sitting there like, holy shit. There was a big ass brawl in the streets. They didn't even use their guns. They just punched each other to death. Because at this range, like what the hell. So either that was a legitimate firefight. Or now I am understanding that it could have just potentially been leftover backpacks from accumulated matches that just didn't go away. So they're fixed now, which is great. And Hell Week is looking interesting 
And I can't wait for the next update that should be probably potentially adding bots to Hell Week. I thought that was going to be included in Update 20, but it's not. Update 20 is purely just moving over to Unity 5 with some minor fixes. So again, major performance increases, nice lighting effects slightly improved. <laughs> like it's not that big of a difference, but you can tell it looks a little bit nicer. And a few fixes and a couple major ones for Hell Week. So... It's it's a good looking update. I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about it. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this game obviously develop further because I've said in my last video development feels slow. I would love to just see this game be done so I could play the campaign with myself with AI teammates because that's just how I roll. I like having AI instead of actual people because I like total control over the situation and sometimes I don't like sounding like a dick to friends telling them what to do. Because it's just not, it's not a fun thing to do. Unless, of course, they have your consent. But then, anyway, whatever. So, there's that. And, of course, there's some known issues I'm not going to get into. Like, one of them I remember reading was, like, that a CTR, like the combat training robots, their heads will just get, will sometimes appear bigger if you're closer to them. I need to experiment with that because that sounds hilarious. It's like a big head mod where if you get too close, suddenly their heads are just enlarged. Like, they just engorge their heads. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the hell that exactly means. But, regardless... It has been fixed, or it's not fixed, it is a known issue, and there are several known issues. Actually, I'll just look at it and kind of go through a few of them. VoIP does not work in co-op. That's, that's a kind of bad one. VoIP used to work, I guess it no longer does work. Uh, some water and vegetation are not affected by fog, which can lead to them looking black from a distance. Interesting. Ragdoll physics. Oh my god, the ragdoll physics are hilarious. Anyway, the ragdoll physics in CTR dismembering on death need fine-tuning. Seeing people fly across the map after you shoot them is a joy. And right there, you can even see as I hit him, he just went like immediately just into the floor. And there was another person I shot who went flying. And there was one person I shot who backwards somersaulted down the stairs. It's quite entertaining to see because ragdolls are absolutely hilarious. But obviously it needs to be addressed. It's a known issue right now. It'll be fixed at some point in the future with future, future iterations of fine-tuning and updating within Unity 5. And the mission overview is currently a placeholder. It'll be updated. Oh, it'll be completed. Not Okay, so not updated. It'll be fully completed in a later update. So, so whether that literally means update 20 or like update 84, who really knows? They just, it's just their future proof in that. So get on them for not bullshitting promises. So again, major upgrade to Unity 5. It is done. Finally, I'm happy and now we can look forward to seeing development either increase a little bit in speed because Unity 5 is a little bit more intuitive to work with and I don't know. I don't know if, how much of a difference it's really going to make. I do know visually though. Visually, the graphics, by the time this game is completed and they get like really good artists to come in here and just go over all the levels and all the, the assets of everything, I know the game has potential to look absolutely spectacular given the stuff I've seen done and technically previewed with uni 5 like the game can look oh god it can look amazing and i really hope they get to that point where they can just make it look absolutely stunning on all fronts versus just the you know the gray internal structures and simple foliage and i mean the game already looks good but i mean it can definitely look a hell of a lot better and now with uni 5 they have all the tools and assets they need to to do such a thing and i would honestly say uni 5 can compare in the right hands with Unreal Engine 4, potentially. Even though Unreal Engine 4, we've all seen the photorealistic as hell shots that have been taken in that engine. It looks absolutely superb. So, there you have it. Update 20. You move to Unity 5. My name is Pepperbilly. Thank you guys for joining me today. It's been long and random. And I'll see you guys on the next one.